your daily Philadelphia Eagles podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into Crossover Thursday, guys. I'm Louis DiBiase, the host of the Locked On Eagles podcast. He's Marcus Mosher, host of Locked On Cowboys. We thank you for making Locked On Eagles and Locked On Cowboys your first listen each and every day available on all podcast platforms and YouTube as well. We're getting you ready for uh, Marcus, not really a big matchup between the Eagles and Cowboys this weekend. Normally when these two teams play down the stretch, it's normally with the NFC East on the line or a playoff berth, but both of these teams have their spots clinched and Dallas has the NFC East clinched. Yeah, it's not like 2008 or anything like that. Or 2013, right? 2019. 2013. Uh, thank goodness, by the way. That's, that's great. <laughs> the Cowboys, Cowboys have not fared well at these, no, they these have not. 17 week, 18 games before. So. Uh, no, it's this is this is unique, and it's it's fun that we're you know kind of get to watch this game. I don't want to say completely stress free, mm -hmm. Louis, but about as stress free as a regular season game can be, right? Right, for sure. So the Cowboys right now are the four seed in the NFC. They have clinched the NFC East. They're eleven and five. The Eagles have a wild card spot clinched. Uh, weirdly enough, San Francisco as the six seed is not clinched, but the Eagles as the seven are, uh, both yeah. at nine and seven. So yeah, Marcus, they both have playoff spots wrapped up um, for the Cowboys. Like, what are they playing for um, this weekend? Is there seeding purposes that you're focused on? Maybe there's a matchup you don't want to face in the wild card round. Yeah, so I mean, technically, they can move up in the seeding. They could go all the way up to two. Yeah, but that's only if Tampa Bay and the the Rams and the Cardinals all lose. I kind of don't see that happening. Like it's just right. those those guys are going to take care of business, especially the Rams and the Cardinals because they're fighting still to win that NFC West. So mm -hmm. I kind of think this game is more about the Cowboys just trying to get back on track on offense and looking better rather than trying to win and increase their seeding. But at the same time. I mean, you know, that's like how much do you really want to play some of these guys if you don't absolutely have to? Like right. Tyron Smith just came back from an injury. Do you really need him to go out there and play 70 snaps in a somewhat meaningless game? Mm -hmm. Probably not, and I think Mike McCarthy knows that. But I, I'm curious, how do you think Nick Sirianni uh, is going to yeah. handle this game? Well, I think, you know, this team, Marcus, at this point, this will be their fourth game in 19 days. So they're already beat up. It took a lot for them to – not run the table, but almost they won seven of their last nine games to find their way in the playoffs after starting two and five. It took a lot out of them. This team is banged up. They have a large chunk of their core on both sides of the ball right now on the COVID list. There's a lot of incentive for Sirianni to rest their starters mm -hmm. um, this weekend and play the backups. And again, too, honestly, um, losing is actually going to help them in the playoffs because yeah. if they lose this game, they have a better chance of – you know, having their options open with, you know, facing the Los Angeles Rams in the first round or the Arizona Cardinals or maybe Dallas. Uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers right now are the heavy favorites for the Eagles to play, regardless of if they're the six or seven seed. Most scenarios play out. They're going to face Brady in the first round. But if they lose this game against the Cowboys um, this weekend, it actually does help them have a better chance of facing the other teams. And although the Buccaneers are pretty banged up, I don't know. I don't want to play Tom Brady in the first round. I'll take my chances with an inconsistent Matt Stafford right now or um, an Arizona Cardinals team that hasn't been the same team despite an impressive win against Dallas that they were in the first half of the year. I don't want to face Tampa Bay or Dallas in the first round. So whatever chance they have of facing that NFC West winner, um, that's what I want. Yeah, and for the Cowboys, I mean, they don't really get to decide. You know, it's not up to them. When they lost right. to the Cardinals last week, they kind of lost control of their own destiny. So right. they're going to face whoever doesn't win the NFC West. And my gut tells me that they would like to play the Cardinals again. I think they play. I think they believe that yeah. they play like a C plus game, and that they, if they play them again, they could win. The Rams are, I, I think, the team they want to avoid because. Matt Stafford's played really well in Dallas before. Mm -hmm. Aaron Donald's is a nightmare matchup for them. And then they've got Cooper Cup and Odell Beckham. So I bet you secretly the Cowboys are kind of hoping that the Rams steal that division uh, so they can get another chance at the Cardinals. But we'll see. Kyler Murray has dominated in Dallas before. So um, I want to talk about just kind of how the seasons have gone yeah, for, for sure. the Cowboys and the Eagles. But we should take a quick break and, and tell you guys about Bet Online, where you could bet on this game. I believe. The last time I checked, the Eagles were a slight home favorite. It looked like it, yeah. Uh, I, I Listen, 
I love betting on football. I would highly recommend staying away from this game. Just I would the, too. <laughs> yeah, just the, there's no good in betting on games where both teams might be resting their quarterbacks in the second half. So, Bet Online would like to wish you a happy betting new year as we continue to march to the playoffs and beyond. Bet Online remains the number one spot for all of your sports wagering action for 2022. It's a new year and a new updated desktop and mobile website to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. All you have to do is use promo code Locked On to get started. From football, basketball, hockey, boxing, and UFC, right to your favorite Vegas casino games, don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to wager on all of your favorite sports. Bet online where the game starts. All right, let's uh, let's talk about the Eagles season because yeah, at, at two and five, it felt like this team was probably going to have a top ten pick, maybe even a top five pick. Uh, you were wondering, you know, are they going to mortgage the future for a quarterback? Mm-hmm. Uh, and then all of a sudden, they clinch a playoff spot before we even get to Week 18. So uh, how has the season gone for the Eagles? Yeah, it's been definitely the tale of two halves. Um, a 2-5 and five team that, like you said, uh, seemed dead in the water after that loss to the Raiders in Las Vegas. They had no identity. They threw the football way too much. They had a second-year quarterback that was in over his head. It felt like the same thing for their first-year head coach. And like you said, it seemed like people started to crack out the mock draft machines, started to look at this 2022 quarterback class, talking myself into Malik Willis or Desmond Ritter. <laughs> How often you know, were you looking at Tankathon just to see oh, where they time man i mean matt corral i was i was more excited at that point of the year for that old miss uh liberty game because i was so interested in the quarterback prospects um and while still i'm not 100 percent sold on jalen hurts the way hurts sirianni and this team have turned things around and like i said earlier they've won now seven of their last nine games seven and two down the stretch to get to nine and seven and clinch a playoff spot um just you know, a testament to how good this team is continuously now, even in a new era at overcoming adversity and running the table. They've done this now for three of the four years I've done locked on Eagles, 2018, 2019, 2021. These veterans are battle tested. The young core is very mature, like Jalen Hurts, that they fit in perfectly with this team. And Sirianni did a a total 180. I mean, Marcus, there's a lot of coaches that stick to their philosophy. It's their way or the highway, and they won't adjust and they'll go down with their beliefs. Sirianni, it was the opposite. I mean, he wanted to throw the football, but once he realized his team can't do that at a high level, volume-wise and efficiency, we saw it against the Dallas Cowboys earlier in the year. They had to switch things up. They ran behind the strength of their team, which is the offensive line. Jalen Hurts' legs and these running backs And it turned into this team being a a top offense in football. And they've won more games in the second half of the year than anybody but Kansas City. So there's not a lot of teams that completely change who they are night and day at the midway point. But Philadelphia did it. And that's why they're playing deep into January. Uh, We're going to continue to talk about the Eagles. But I want to ask you, since you have done some draft work, did you have a quarterback that you liked? I am all in on Malik Willis still. Oh, okay. I'm a Marcus. I'm a high ceiling guy to a fault. Even if the floor is a lot lower, I'm going to take the risk. And yeah, am I going to get a Paxton Lynch every so often? 100%. But at the same time, I've also loved the likes of Lamar Jackson and Josh Allen over Josh Rosen. So for me, I just see the way Malik Willis can just change gears, not to Lamar Jackson's level, but a, a poor man's Lamar and just the arm strength. Um, I just, I love that kind of prospect. And for me in a class, it's already, there's a lot of risk to it and not a lot of safe bets. Um, to me, I'm going to go with the most upside. So I've got my eyes on Willis and Corral for sure right now. And the Eagles could take one, but right now, I mean, all their picks are now in the late teens, early twenties, because the Miami Dolphins pick they have, it once was second overall at one and seven. They've run the table and won, what, seven of their last eight. So yep. that's a low pick in the Colts as well. So uh, I think quarterback for now, unless there's a trade for a star veteran, it's probably out of the question. I think Jalen Hurts is going to be the guy next year. Admittedly, I haven't completely you know, looked at all these guys yet, but I'm mm-hmm. kind of a Kenny Pickett fan. There's just listen. I get I yeah. get the, the the some of the limits that he might have, but mm-hmm. if there's one guy in this class I had to bet on to be like, hey, that guy's starting it. and being yeah. he's a he's a top fifteen quarterback five years from now, it's probably Pickett. I think he's probably the safest player, and he does. I forget who made the comparison, but somebody said he's like a safer Johnny Manziel, just with like his play style, and uh, it is kind of interesting. I like Pickett. 
um, more than some prospects. I would put him ahead of Desmond Ritter and probably Carson Strong. Um, it's an interesting class. I mean, I, I think the, it feels the, like the, the 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 poor man's version of like uh, yeah Joe Burrow. Right. It's just hard for me to like say. I don't want to. You know, a lot of people are comparing it to like the 2013 quarterback class. No, it's very hard for me bad. to do that because I did that with the 2017 class, and then out comes Patrick Mahomes. So you just yeah. really never know. You you never know. Um, yeah. All right, let's get back to the Eagles. Yeah. Uh, it. If they are going to make a run in these playoffs, how are they going to do it? I think it's going to be continuously doing what they do best, and that is um, running behind Lane Johnson, Jason Kelsey, Jordan Maialata, and Landon Dickerson in this offensive line. I mean, that's what won them a Super Bowl five years ago. Um, that's how they've been consistent throughout pretty much uh, the entire 21st century has been trench play, and I think that's the strength of this team again. Uh, hopefully Jalen Hurts' ankle heals up, and they can kind of get back to that dynamic running threat that he is. Um, he's had to rely more on his arm the last few weeks, but yeah, I think that's the way they got to do it is continue to run the football and then be opportunistic and efficient when you do have to throw. I'm just, you know, Marcus, the big question is, you know, that's the way they they win football games, but the way the other teams win football games that they're probably going to play in the playoffs – Dallas, Arizona, LA, um, you know, Green Bay, maybe even those teams can throw the football at will with star quarterbacks and a lot of weapons. And so if those teams like the Cowboys did on Monday night earlier this year, if they're on fire and your defense, the Eagles defense can't stop them, can Jalen Hurts throw 30 to 40 times and keep you in the ball game? Uh, that's going to be an interesting question that I think making the playoffs is going to help you uh, take a look at. All right, so this is admittedly my Cowboys bias here, but mm -hmm. tell me if I'm wrong. I, I just kind of get the sense from the outside looking in that yep. Philly is really excited to make the playoffs, but there's probably an expectation that this team isn't going to make a run. Like it's, yes. they're, they're in a tough mm -hmm. spot here because the NFC is so top-heavy right now. Mm -hmm. um, but it is a sign that, you know, in year one of the, the rebuild, we're already making the playoffs. So, yeah. hey, this is – it's basically like um, – house money for lack of a better word. Yeah. That's actually what my co-host, Gino Camilleri said on the show when the Eagles did clinch over the weekend. Um, the excitement level is there. It's just for different reasons. Like you said, it's like great to have, you know, a first time starting quarterback and a first time head coach get in together, especially the way they did it again, starting two and five and mm -hmm. running the table. It's such a huge step and a foundation piece a building block for the future, for the long-term success. But yeah, I, I, this doesn't feel like 2017 or, Heck, even 2018 and 2019, when those teams kind of limped into the playoffs, you still had expectations because there was a lot of that core still from the Super Bowl roster. Whereas this year, you know, some of those pieces are still there, but, you know, they don't match up well against Tampa Bay or Dallas yeah. or yeah. Los Angeles or Arizona. So, yeah, I don't, I don't think people are expecting a playoff win. But if they did it, would people be surprised? No, because the Eagles for four of the last five years have kind of shocked the world a lot um, when they're counted out. I wouldn't bet my money on it for sure. Yeah, but yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's definitely not out of the realm of possibilities. And we talked about this on the Wednesday episode of Lothan Cowboys podcast, like for yeah. Dallas, like the expectation going into the season was to make the playoffs. So right. losing in the first round, I think a lot of people will consider that a, a, a disappointing season, right? Yeah. I, I think things are just a little bit different for Philadelphia because they are in a different space, right? Like, mm -hmm. They had more dead cap money than any team in the NFL. Right. And a lot of people thought they were going to be. Most didn't more... think they were going to be here. Yeah. Uh, most people thought they were probably going to be closer to a top five pick than being in the playoffs. Right. Mm -hmm. So I, I think this is, I think Philadelphia, they they are exactly, they're ahead of where a lot of people expected them to be. So yep. uh, we we should continue to talk about the some of the Dallas Cowboys stuff, right? We should we start to talk about some of the Absolutely. expectation for them. Yeah. Uh, but before we do that, let's take one more quick break. So tell you guys about Get Upside. I gotta tell you, I, I I use Get Upside every single time I fill up my tank because you're making 25 cents per gallon on every single gallon of gas every single time you fill up. All you have to do is just download the free Get Upside app in the App Store or Google Play right now and use promo code Touchdown and get a bonus 25 cents per gallon on your first fill up. That's up to 50 cents cash back. Don't pay full price at the pump anymore. Get cash back using GetUpside. You can cash out anytime your bank account, PayPal, or e-gift card. Just download the free GetUpside app and use promo code TOUCHDOWN and get up to 50 cents per gallon cash back on your first tank. That is promo code TOUCHDOWN. 
This is Crossover Thursday. I'm Louis DiBiase of Locked on Eagles. He's Marcus Mosher of Locked on Cowboys. I don't know if I said Locked on Cowboys for myself. I'm Locked on Eagles. Um, and we're getting into <laughs> You're welcome anytime on Locked on Eagles. My listeners would not be a fan of that. Um, <laughs> but what they are a fan of is the Eagles clinching their way into the NFC playoffs in 2021. The Dallas Cowboys have the NFC East clinched up, Marcus. Right now at 11 and 5, they're the four seed. We kind of got into in segment two, you know, the Eagles and have they met expectations for this year? What do you think of the Cowboys? I mean, they've won the division. They have a lot of talent on both sides of the ball, as they tend to. Um, but at the same time, you know, there's been some hiccups this year. Like, where is your head at with, with the Cowboys heading into the postseason? Are you as confident as you were um, at any point this year? All right. So big picture view. Mm -hmm. The Cowboys are exactly where they should be, right? They're second right. point differential this year. They're like first in turnover differential. Uh, they won the NFC East, which is always the goal every single year to make the playoffs. Mm -hmm. And for the most part, they're, they're playing well. They've got the number one ranked offense in the league. However, something about that Cardinals game just leaves a bad taste in your mouth. And it's mm -hmm. not because – maybe it's because, you know, they lost to the Chiefs a, a month ago, and that was right. a big game. They lost to the Broncos. They lost to the Bucks, And, like, you could make an argument they've lost to a lot of teams that are going to be in the playoffs. So are they – are they just a team that beats up on bad teams and struggles against good teams? Or are those just type of games that they just happen to lose? They're coin flip games. I, I kind of think that's more it. That Listen, when you play a good team like the Cardinals or the Bucks or the Chiefs, you're going to lose every once in a while. But, right. it, you know, the, the, the football is a weird shape, man. And it, it bounces in mysterious ways. I still think the Cowboys are really good. Does that mean that they're going to make the NFC, you know, championship game or go to the Super Bowl? Probably not. But I still feel like this is a good team, regardless of what the outcome is over the next couple of weeks. Yeah, so it's interesting. We were talking about the Eagles and how they were kind of playing with house money this year, making the postseason. For the Dallas Cowboys, it's kind of different, right? Um, they're still on that timeline the Eagles were before, from 2016 to 2020, yep. where making the playoffs just getting in at this point, winning the division is almost an expectation. Exactly. It's not really a surprise. There isn't really a, a huge amount of excitement with that. Like you said, now it's about, you know, beating the great teams because now championship aspirations are there. You know, when it comes to like Dak Prescott, Ezekiel Elliott, and these Cowboys runs from that timeline I laid out, like 2016 to now, are, are these the heaviest expectations the Cowboys have had heading into a season and heading into the playoffs where it's, maybe championship or bust? Like, would them getting to the NFC title be enough for fans? It's a really good question. Um, in 2016, I think the expectation was just don't suck because right. Tony Romo was out for the year and Dak led them to the number one seat, which is mm -hmm. way above what they should have been. And the expectations got too high, right? Rookie quarterbacks typically don't go very far in the playoffs and they got knocked out in the second round. It happens. 2018, uh, Still weren't sure what kind of team that was. They they started off the season three and five. They traded for Amari Cooper. They went on a run. They won a playoff game, and they lost to the Rams in Los Angeles. I still define that as a successful season. This year, I feel like making the playoffs is the expectation, as you mentioned. Mm -hmm. I do think the expectations here are higher than they have ever been before because you've got a franchise quarterback under contract. You've got a right. defense that finally – can get some stops and can, can get some turnovers. You've got, you know, two outstanding receivers in Amari Cooper and, and C.D. Lamb. You had Michael Gallup before last week. I think Cowboy fans want to see them win at least a playoff game, if not multiple playoff games. If they if they get knocked out in round one, it's going to be looked at as, as a big disappointing season for Dallas. Yeah, I definitely agree. I mean, Marcus, like normally with Dallas, a lot of the times just because of the amount of hype they get, you know, the amount of media attention. Sometimes those teams, I don't know, expectations maybe are set a little bit too high. But this year it does feel real. I mean, even though they've lost a lot of these games against good teams, like they were in it from the yeah. jump against Tampa Bay, you know, Arizona, Kansas City. They've beaten some good teams this year as well. And like you mentioned, I mean, they just have – They've got pieces. They have stars everywhere now on both sides of the football. I mean, before Michael Gallup, you had maybe, you know, a top three wide receiver trio in the okay. league, a star quarterback, a great running back duo. I mean, Micah Parsons, the Eagles love Devontae Smith, but a lot of people are talking about that pick. Like, yep. did they mess up, you know, not taking an all around maybe the best defensive player in football? So, yeah, it does feel like the expectations this year, at least like they're there. And I feel like they're more justified. 
Yeah, and I, I think it's all kind of relative too. Like if they if they have to play go go to Green Bay and, and play the Packers in round two, if that game is close and they lose, I don't think people are going to kill them. If they get killed by the Cardinals or the Rams in round one of the playoffs, that's where we're going to see a lot of criticism. And frankly, it's going to be deserved, right? Like you can't you can't lose another home playoff game. Uh, I again, I don't know if they are Super Bowl you know actually favorites or anything like that, but. They should go deep in the playoffs, and I, I I kind of expect them to at least win a playoff game this year. Louis. Who's the team um, you're looking to avoid the most? <laughs> Green Bay, <laughs> because yeah. of I think that's all, most teams <laughs> of all, all the demons. But listen, we we've talked about this all year long on the Lockdown Cowboy Podcast. If you want to be considered an elite team, a Super Bowl contending team, you can't be afraid of Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady anymore. I know those guys are special, special players. Right, but you've got to go beat them, and you can't just try to look for the easiest path possible to go to the Super Bowl. More than more than likely, you're going to have to go to Lambeau and beat Aaron Rodgers, and uh, we know they they haven't been able to do that before. But frankly, I kind of want them to go there because I want to see how they stack up. I want to see how they measure up against those teams because if they do win that game, Louis, now we're talking, right? Now we're talking about hey, they have a legit shot to run the table. Trying to avoid them is is I don't think the answer. It's going to be fascinating. Both these teams in the playoffs for the first time together since uh, 2018. And Marcus, again, like uh, like we said, uh, excuse me, they do not have a, a big game at the end of the year for the first time in a long time. Yeah, I mean, normally we would be like really looking at this game, looking at yeah. the matchups, looking at who you know the right. weather and all that kind of stuff. But it doesn't matter, right? Like, like it, all we care about is get out of this game healthy, right? That's I literally agree. all we care about. Um, do you think how long, like last question here, starters, like how long do you think they play? Or are they going to play? I would say it's probably dependent on the starter, right? Like right. Tyron Smith, my guess, and Zach Martin, my guess is they play a quarter, maybe two quarters, and then they mm -hmm. pull them. I think they want those guys to have a normal work week, a normal, you know, warm up and all that kind of stuff. And then once they play a little bit, that's when you pull them back. I just think it's a bad idea to completely sit guys and say, hey, we're going to be off the next 15 game days. Right. Be ready for that intensity against the Cardinals. I I, I kind of think we're going to see them a quarter, quarter and a half. Some of the younger guys might play the entire game. Uh, but Dak, those guys, I, I don't expect them to finish. Enjoy the game this weekend, guys. You can find more of Locked on Eagles and Locked on Cowboys on all podcast platforms and on YouTube as well. I'm Louis DiBiase of Locked on Eagles. You can follow me on Twitter at DiBiaseLOE. And Marcus, uh, they can follow you on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosher.